chapter 1.7 scale and proportion part 1 so again we're in our principles scale and proportion right so we have our elements this is how we're going to use them size and relative uh, scale so we perceive scale in relation to our own size and in the art world the human form you know relatively six feet uh, in height that is regular human scale. So <clears throat> we usually work really hard to ensure all of the artwork, the parts uh, are in correct proportion so it has a um, sensible meaning but there are times when art is either made abnormally large or it's put next to something in surrealism to make a discordant proportion to express some meaning. Okay, so artists make conscious choices about this, and it just really depends on what they want to communicate. But there are some standards, you know. Uh, like in the Renaissance, all that sense of um, the scale of the human form was done in a certain way to really make the human look realistic. But that's not always the goal of art. And you should really think about that, too, in taking this course. I know that a lot of you are like, oh, it's better because it's more realistic. Well, that isn't always true, okay? So there's meaning behind monumental works. Monumental means larger than human form. So if you see a 10-foot figure, that is monumental or heroic scale, okay? So that means that somebody is epic, um, heroic, like a bronze figure placed in a plaza of um, someone, you know, like a, I'm, I'm in New Mexico, so I'm thinking conquistador, like on Yacht Day or someone. Um, although I don't know that we exactly think of him as a hero, but he is put on a larger scale than the regular human scale. So we're going to get into somebody who is uh, really fun, his sense of humor comes out with scale, which is Klaus Oldenburg. And um, Van Bruggen is his um, wife. And I don't know how to say her first name, Kuje, I believe, or Kuse uh, Van Bruggen. But this match cover is enormous, right? So look at the scale of the humans. This is monumental scale. It's even beyond that. This is a match cover made to look um, semi-realistic. It's toy-like. Um, but it functions like an old-fashioned one that the um, matches sort of bend their paper. And he's played around with that so that people can get under it and around it. He's done all kinds of different materials. He's made a lot of stuff out of fabric. Um, he did some inflatables I saw on the side of a building once in Boston. Um, an inflated lobster on the side of the building. Maybe it was a crab, but I think it was a lobster. But anyway, just um, playing with that sense of... Um, us as the small thing. So it's monumental, it's beyond monumental as a sense of humor. Okay? This piece is tiny. It's smaller than what you're looking at. It's one and three quarter inch high. The first dimension right here is always height. And it's five and five eighths wide. It's tiny. So his idea, uh, there's a couple layers here. He wants to um, paint humans at a bird scale, like a smallness of the hummingbird scale. Hummingbirds are tiny, so he's painting them at that, that size. So he's going miniature, and he also wants humans to get up close to this piece. So that's intimacy. Um, one person at a time in the gallery can get up close to it. Um, if you were trying to look at it and somebody else is looking at it, your head is, their head's going to block the way. Okay. Lots of detail. He wants you to have an intimate, close experience. This also is true, 4.4.8. I'm going to let you look into that on your own. But yes, very similar in terms of tiny, so it's in the head of a, in a needle. Okay, so this gleaners is going to throw everything on its head. And it did in 1857. This broke all the rules. People were furious. Okay, so when you normally have large figures, and we're going to get into hierarchical scale in a minute, when you have figures that are large in the foreground, 
they are usually Madonna or Jesus or a royal figure. In this case, he is taking the women that aren't even the main harvesters. Those are the main harvesters there. They harvested the good stuff. Um, they're taking the gleaners, the people that get the dregs, the last bits, cleaning up maybe a few scraps, if you can see that there. Um, they get the very last bits. He is showing them um, in a place of honor, and that is what threw off the art world. Oh my goodness, how dare you. And then on, here, on a figure here in horseback, this guy's even smaller than these middle class figures. This sense of royalty or higher um, echelon person is way in the back and he's tiny. So he's making a political statement here, a social political statement about people who are left behind and impoverished and picking up scraps. And it caused quite a ruckus. So hierarchical scale normally, and this is what we're going to get into now, and our friends from Egypt for thousands of years use this scale. The largest figure, and these are both full-sized humans, and, that, and the larger person might actually be in reality a shorter person, but the large person is the important person. So we're going we're, we're gonna to depict that person as large. So in hierarchical scale, the pharaoh is going to be the big guy, right? So you see him here, and these figures down here are smaller because they are less important, okay? That is a basic hierarchical scale uh, methodology. Oftentimes, um, the figure will be higher, too, can be on top of these other figures, which we're going to look at in a minute. Um, so... This is a relief from the northern wall of the Great Temple of Amun-Re, 19th Dynasty. So this is 3,000 year old plus piece. But what we're looking at is these different segments um, here with the figures. And our pharaoh is our largest in the relief. That was a, um, it's a bas relief, but it's got another name too. I don't want to get you too confused. But he is the, he is the largest and he's the highest in the social order. Okay, so this is depicting the military campaign of Pharaoh Seti the One, figure A, against the Hittites and the Libyans. Now, Libya still exists, right? Um, but we kind of see these, these um, fights. Sorry, this glitched on me. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to have to stop here. <clears throat> 